Today we are building these budget two-way stereo speakers. I am calling them the Dynamites because they sound absolutely amazing, so stay tuned to see how I built them. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. With more than 800,000 customers worldwide and 18,000 plus PCB orders per day, JLC PCB is one of the leading PCB manufacturers in the world. Ordering PCBs at JLC PCB is easy. Click on Quote Now, upload your Gerber file, select the option from the easy to use web interface and order 5 PCBs for as little as $2. Delivery is quick and I received my boards after only one week after placing the order. The quality is top notch and it came packaged securely and safely. I really enjoy working with JLC PCB, so if you need a PCB for one of your own projects, I highly recommend placing your order with JLC PCB. This is a budget speaker and is designed around budget components. Although I am not necessarily skimping on the crossover components, I believe that a crossover should always have good quality components in it and especially if you are building a DIY speaker, you can put a little bit of extra money into good crossover parts, uh, which is very different from many commercial offerings where they are building towards a certain price point. The woofer I have chosen is a Hy-Vee B4N, it's a 4 inch woofer and the tweeter is a PLS BC25TG15 4 ohm tweeter. And even though these are budget components, they do perform well above their price point in my opinion. And I think this is going to be an awesome little speaker that you can use as a small hi-fi speaker and even for home theater use if you are in a smaller space, as well as on your desk as a near field monitor, which is actually where I will be using these. Part of the process of designing a speaker is once you have calculated your box volume, we need to build a test enclosure. Mount the drivers and take test measurements of the individual driver responses so that we can model and build a suitable crossover. This is part of my normal process um, and this is a stereo pair uh, and I have assembled just one of the cabinets so that I can do the measurements and then model the crossover. Once I have done that I can go ahead and build the second enclosure and you can see the parts I have already cut for that enclosure here. One of the first things to do is to cut the woofer and tweeter holes in the baffle and also cut a hole in the back panel for the port and then also a hole for the speaker terminal cup so that we can connect this up to our amplifier when we are done. Now I have designed this particular speaker with the rounded corners and that is so that we can eliminate some of the diffraction effects that we get on sharp corners. Uh, it just smooths out the frequency response in certain areas and is generally good practice. However, it's not 100% necessary. Uh, with the bolt plans I am putting together, you can use either rounded or sharp corners and the difference in the response is very small and will not negatively affect the response. It really is just a small dip or peak in response as certain frequencies are diffracted around the sharp corners. But let's get on with the build and I will provide comments as we go along. I start off by marking the positions of the drivers on the front baffle and then we use the router and circle cutting jig to make the cutouts.
for the port I am using a 40 millimeter diameter PVC pipe now I know that PVC pipe sizes vary across the world so it will be very difficult for you guys to get exactly what I've got here uh, so in the build plans I have specified a port that you can purchase from Parts Express in the US or Sun Imports if you're in the EU uh, it is an adjustable port and you can use this in the build and I will specify that in the build plans uh, But for my build I will be using this 40 millimeter PVC pipe uh, The internal dimension is around 36 millimeters. So we have about a 2 millimeter wall thickness uh, I need to cut this to length, but before I do that I need to drill the hole for it first uh, So let's do that now For now I am just drilling a shallow rebate for the port to fit into, then later on you will see me cut the hole uh, with a router and flush trim bit and then round over the edge. Using a 100mm hole saw, uh, I'm cutting the holes in the brace that fits inside the cabinet and helps to stiffen up the enclosure to avoid panel resonances. I can now start the glue up of all the panels, which is pretty straightforward. I'm only using wood glue and clamps. Uh, since I will be rounding the corners, I didn't want to use any brad nails. But if you are building this with straight edges, brad nails will definitely make the process a bit quicker.
Before gluing in place the front baffle, I am using two-part epoxy to glue in place the port on the inside of the back panel. As mentioned before, using a router with the flush trim bit, the hole for the port is cut and given a round over. After a good sanding with 180 grit sandpaper, the corners of the enclosure is rounded over on the router table with a large round over bit. To prepare the enclosure for paint, I use about two coats of sanding sealer to seal the MDF, sanding in between coats with 320 grit sandpaper. But before I go on to painting, I luckily remember to also cut the holes for the speaker terminal cups. To get a really good paint finish on your speaker, you have to prepare the surface properly so that you have no imperfections in the surface. Using a filler primer is a great way to get a good base for your top coat. Um, it goes on in about two layers with wet sanding in between. I use 600 grit wet sandpaper. Uh, after this is done, I also used the general primer and then went on to applying the top color coat in a few layers with wet sanding in between, again with 600 grit sandpaper. A final matte clear coat is applied over the top coat as a protective barrier. Before we get to the crossover design, let's look at the measurements I took of the enclosure with rounded corners versus straight corners. For the woofer, we can see that there is not much difference between the two. This is the purple and blue lines. The tweeter, red and pink line, we can see more variation, but it really is very minimal. However, from this you can see how rounded or beveled corners on the front baffle of a speaker can make a difference in the response and how it smooths it out. 
So I am designing one crossover for both versions and here you can see that we have very few parts and it is rather simple. The frequency response is very flat with a crossover point just over 3000 Hz and the impedance curve shows that the speaker does not dip below 4 ohms and is essentially a nominal 8 ohm rated speaker. It also shows the F3 or minus 3 dB point of the bass driver at around 46 Hz which is very good for a small driver like this. I tweaked the L pad on the tweeter uh, to what suits my ears, but if you want to try a few options, you can adjust the value of one of the resistors to lower or boost the tweeter level from minus 2 dB all the way up to plus 1 dB. These details will be in the build plan. After the crossover is assembled, the board is fixed to the inside bottom of the enclosure with some hot glue. I can then solder the wires to the terminal cup, woofer and tweeter terminals. The enclosure is stuffed with polyester batting before the drivers are fixed into position with screws. These speakers are fantastic and right now my favorite. It is amazing how a 4 inch woofer can give you such a full sound with clear natural sounding mid-range. The tweeter is also clear and smooth. It has a really dynamic and lively sound so thus I'm calling these the dynamites because they really are dynamite for the size, price and simplicity in design and crossover. If you want a small speaker that will blow you away then give these a try. Whether for hi-fi, home theatre or near-field listening, they suit the ball perfectly and most people will not require a subwoofer for, for these since they go so low. However, I will be building a matching sub for this, but this will be part of an upcoming video series on subwoofers. So subscribe, give the video a thumbs up and ring that notification bell. And if you want more behind the scenes and exclusive content, then check out my Patreon page or become a member by clicking the join button below. All links are, are in the description below, uh, including a link to the build plans. The sound demo that is coming up now will be best listened to through good quality headphones. But remember, it will only sound as good as your system you are listening through. And it is not an accurate representation of what these awesome speakers sound like in real life. Until next time, adios.
be loved by you, be loved by you. I don't need to be hurt or rescued, not by you. I can hear the rain. 